It's the Time Time Uncut and Unfiltered podcast coming to you on Monday night, March 25th. And I don't know that I like that music. It almost put me to sleep for the one minute we're listening. But we have a couple of guests on tonight. Co-host Kevin Peel joining us all the way from Chipley, Florida. And we have ASA uh, president, Track Enterprise president and ASA promoter, Mr. Bob Sargent. No telling where he's at in the world. Hey, guys. How are you doing tonight, Tyler? I'm good. Hello, guys. Where are you at, Bob? I am back to Illinois, started in Pensacola, spent the morning in Nashville getting that track ready, and now I'm back in Illinois to the headquarter office. So, yeah. Sounds good. Well, appreciate you guys joining the show. We've got a lot to unpack after a uh, fun-filled weekend uh, this past weekend at the ASA Stars uh, event in uh, Pensacola, Florida, race number two two of a 10 race uh series and uh really becoming a national premiere um a national tour and really a premiere tour um of what y'all got going on there bob yeah i mean i i sat there as you know the promoter the the sanctioning body and and you know working with tim and nicholas so much there but uh you know i sat there as a fan also and i looked around at that the the talent and um, both from the drivers, the crew chiefs, the owners, and this just some quality equipment out on that racetrack. And uh, I just feel so fortunate to have all this together right now. And now I feel like we're really in a, in a mode to keep it all together and make it better. Uh, Bob, it was nice seeing the ASA uh, national tour back at Pensacola. Um, it's one of those facilities that, you know, I think every national tour, uh, with the talent level you have that you bring to the table, it, it brings the racing back to a community that, that loves racing. Yeah, I agree. You know, the facility is just, it's really good for our style of racing. And of course the, the history it's got there with the snowball derby, this is nice to bring another late model series there and, and early in the year. And I think Tim might be going to join us here in a little bit, but you know, he does such a good job down there. But again, we started at uh, New Smyrna and um, now we did Pensacola and then we go to Hickory. And again, it's just the quality of drivers and the crew chiefs and the strategy and the equipment and everything we have just feels so professional and so uh, entertaining for the fans that uh, just a lot of excitement moving forward. Yeah, I thought that uh, y'all had a really good buzz there, and really the buzz through the whole year. You've had a great car count uh, at the first race, New Smyrna. Um, had a 40-plus cars at that race. You had to have a last chance race. At this race, you ended up with about 32 car, 31, 32 cars. Uh, was going to start that whole field, which I thought that was good. And um, just um, the level of talent, as y'all are saying here, I mean, you've got – you've got some of the best super late model drivers and they're driving from California to come race with you. It's just not a Southeast type deal. You had three guys that came from the California region that that's participating. Yeah. Yeah. And again, we're fortunate because these guys are so talented. That also leads to the professionalism of the way they handle themselves all weekend from the, the, again, the crews they have, the, just everything we do is just, is really exciting. You know, we're only 12 races in this thing. Um, and um, so we've still got a lot uh, of ideas and a lot of improving to do. We tweak some things every once in a while. But again, the core really seems good. I think the points will be out. Hopefully we're working on finishing those. But I really think with a few of the misfortunes that a few of the guys had and the fortunes that a couple other had um, this race, that the points are going to be really, really tight. So that's going to be fun to start watching too. Yeah, and uh, real quick, Kevin, you take the next question. Let's kind of go bounce. If a fan has or anybody wants to make a comment, make a comment in the chat. We'll pick those up and we'll ask Bob or Tim and have Kevin here answer questions. But go ahead, Kevin. Well, that that brings – you mentioned the points, and, and that's one thing that I've noticed right off the bat this year. I think the points mean more to these racers this year than they did last year. It, it's like that they're on board with your points fund, whatever you're going to do at the end of the year, and they're chasing it. I mean, it. I think uh, last year 
you know, you might have had, you know, five or six maybe that are that were really engaged in the point system. But this year, I think you've got nearly the whole field that's after that championship. Yeah, Kevin, I'm glad, you know, you're right. I'm glad you noticed that. You know, we put $100,000 up. So, you know, it's, it's, it's nothing to sneeze at. And again, we're still on our early, early stage of this whole thing, but uh, it's a good start. I do think you're right. I think a lot of teams are focused on that, which is fun here at the start. Um, you know, we'll, we'll probably get in the middle and see some, some of it weed out. But, boy, right now it's wide open, and, and we've got a lot of the talented uh, of the nation, you know, looking at it. So, again, we're, we're, we're really looking forward to how this all shakes out through Hickory. And then we go up into the north a little bit. But uh, that's what this is all about, letting different fans watch. And, you know, something else I think that they're all looking for is the exposure they're going to get. I mean, these guys, again, they're professionals. They're smart guys. And they know now we're getting more uh, people talking about the series, um, the drivers that are involved. We started a new, uh, new TV, tracktv.com. We're real happy with how that turned out yesterday. So, uh, you know, just a lot of positives going forward. Also join us on here, Tim. Can you hear us? I see. Uh, I see his name pop up, but I don't know that Tim is on here. But uh, uh, I will say this to kind of what you're to to bounce off of that. Um, one of the talking points that they want to talk about, we'll just go ahead and cover it. Track TV was uh, on new this year to the ASA deal. Uh, much better. Much, much better uh, presentation to your online customer. I mean, really. I appreciate that. We're, we're really taking that serious. Uh, we know there's some big uh, big groups out there that do streaming in our, in our space. But uh, these guys, this track TV idea came from the Midwest Tour TV dot com or dot TV. And these guys are very experienced in what they do. They're very passionate in, uh, you know, kind of how they produce. Um, the interviews you'll see, you'll see better clarity on the, 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 the videos and the audio. Um, our two commentators are very experienced in those. So, again, um, we talk about tires. We talk about laps. We talk about a lot of things. But there is a lot to this whole series, and this is part of it, uh, guys. We, we're really taking this track TV serious, and we're going to take it to the next level also. Well, definitely, when you have a – a a a outlet that you can control the content and you can bring new content and bring what the racer really wants to hear instead of somebody sitting up there that really you know it's just a commentator you know type of professional commentator let's just put it that way and they don't have the ins and outs of that and y'all can bring that to the table and control that then you can control bringing in the new sponsors, bringing in the media, bringing in the coverage. And that's always good for a racer when you have that type of situation that he can grasp a hold of. And it goes hand to hand to what we just talked about in the points fund as well. Yeah, I appreciate you bringing that up, Kevin, because you're right. We felt we'll start in tracktv.com. Um, we're going to have about 80 to 100 events on there. So we have a lot more big announcements to, to bring up. But um the people that are involved with us on that, we just feel that they're more grassroots, they're more our style, what we're doing, and we're going to have a lot of control over that, which will in turn benefit the teams as, as we go forward. And they're, they're a big part of this to give the fans what they're looking for. Uh, I think Tim's trying to sign on. Hopefully we can get him on. Uh, I'm going to try him right here. Tim, can you hear us? You know, I'm going to have to – you know what? I'm about to have to do what uh, I did with – um. Uh, I'm going to do Tim like I did Bubba. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I knew that's coming. <laughs> Let's see if I can't just rile him up here on the old. Hey, my phone's not letting me, that's let me get access to video or audio. Oh, don't worry. You're live. We've got you on the, uh, we're going to, you're Bubba Pollard right now kind of style. No, you, you're bad <laughs> on the technology. We've got uh, Kevin Peel here. Bob Sargent, uh, join us live via the telephone will be Mr. Tim Bryant from Five Flags Speedway. Tim, we're just talking about what a great weekend you had this past weekend there at Five Flags Speedway. Uh, your family always does a tremendous job there at uh, Five Flags, but uh, Mother Nature cooperated with you, and uh, the fans had a great time. 
Yeah, we really did have good cooperation from Mother Nature. She scared us a little bit on Friday, but that worked out as well. And, uh, you know, we had a, a good collaborative effort this weekend with our friends from Track Enterprises and putting on what uh, what ended up being a, a, a really good event uh, at the end, both Saturday night and, and again on Sunday. And, uh, you know, I think we're off to a, a really good start for, uh, for the ASA season. Yeah, we were just talking about the track TV and, and what's going on there. Um, your local divisions, I know that you and Steve Stokes do uh, a recap uh, once every other week, so we don't want to steal y'all's thunder of your recap, but you had a lot of good local local divisions with your local guys coming out for their opening night. Yeah, we had some great racing on, uh, on, on Friday night, and, of course, uh, you know, our crown stock division – uh, was was you know with all due respect almost the highlight of the weekend some absolutely fantastic racing on Saturday afternoon a 20 lap Crown Vic race and of course uh, uh, you know a guy we're familiar with Bubba Pollard wins the race and then uh, uh, unfortunately in a car he was not very familiar with uh, there was some some post race technical infractions uh, discovered so that uh, it kind of threw a damper on things but you know it was all in good fun. Uh, it was it was exciting racing and uh, uh, just kind of kind of set the tone for what happened yesterday. Go ahead, Kevin. Yeah, Tim, you you I know you you never had a doubt you were going to get get your races in right. You're you're always positive when it comes to the weather. Well, I tell you what, Kevin, we uh, we try to remain optimistic. We've uh, we've had some hurdles, as any track in Florida has, and probably uh, for that matter, any any track around the nation. You know, we just uh, do the best we can with making decisions on on what Mother Nature throws at us, and uh, um, you know, kind of rely on forecasts and, and and what have you. But it ended up, I I, I got to be honest with you, Friday night was probably one of the most pleasant evenings we've had at Five Flags Speedway in recent years, uh, and we ended up with a a, a pretty decent crowd. We want to thank all the fans, you know, that were that were that were loyal and and, and you know uh, uh, dedicated to come out and, and see some racing. Uh, and uh, uh, again, the Friday night kind of set the tone for what was a great day on Saturday and uh, uh, an even better day yesterday for the ASA uh, Sunshine State 200. So um, let's switch to uh, real quick. You had a great, uh, great ARCA race both uh, on Saturday, on Saturday night. Uh, William Sawalich and Gio Rizzo, uh really was the, the class of the field. Um, and then, uh, of course, Bubba finishing third there, and and uh, Jake Finch having an early flat tire kind of hurt his night. But I, I thought, um, I, in my opinion. I think that was a great move having Supers and ARCA on the same weekend. It really helped engage your uh, your fan base. I tell you, the energy that we felt throughout the, the three day weekend was just phenomenal. And uh, you know, uh, you know, I can't I can't say what our plans are for next year, but uh, you know, we'd like to to make it an annual event. The Sunshine State 200 next year will be the third annual. It keeps getting uh, you know uh, 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 bigger and better, and uh, so. Uh, uh, again, we want to thank all the fans that, that came out and, and supported the event. I tell you, this time of year is really tough uh, in our area. We're a destination town. There's a lot of things going on. Disney on Ice was in town yesterday. They had a, a big spring fest uh, uh, in nearby Navarre that had some some top uh, top level country music artists. So uh, our competition was fierce for for entertainment. But uh, you know, we were we were supported by some great diehard race fans and we appreciate that and uh you know we want to make this an annual event i think we can build uh, uh, build on it and make it bigger and better each year yeah well, think, sorry go ahead. go ahead yeah i think mr bob would agree that uh that the timing was just right and the fans came out and supported it and and both the series you know it's like tyler bouncing off what tyler just said um the fans always absorb when the racing is great, right? And and the racing at the racetrack is just, over the last two or three years, you know, there's a lot of talk about the surface, but look, the surface is producing great racing, no matter what series comes to town. And then the talent of the race car drivers that are, are packing the house and bringing, bringing the, that type of talent to the racetrack is just, it's a win-win for Mr. Bob and you as a track owner and promoter. 
Well, I tell you again, we uh, uh, we enjoy our relationship with Track Enterprises and, and 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 the passion that they have for producing good short track racing. Uh, the fans have been supportive. The teams have been supportive. I think uh, most of the teams are realizing uh, that uh, what what Bob has put together in terms of the uh, the ASA National Tour uh, is is here to stay, and uh, uh, some uh, certainly some some great things are ahead. You know, we uh, uh, we come out of the gate with a new product, and uh, um, you know we've we've had a couple of hurdles. I think Bob would agree on that, but. Uh, you know we're overcoming them, and uh, you know we 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 kind of thrive on the challenges uh, that we have, and 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 any mistakes that we make along the way, we're rectifying. And I just think I'm I'm, I'm feeling very very positive about what the future holds uh, for this series. Well, Tim, you played right into my hands. Um, <clears throat> you missed the drivers' meeting, Kevin, at the drivers' meeting. Um, Tim said, guys, if you've got any positive comments, you can direct them my way. If you've got any negative comments, uh, Bob Sargent's standing right over there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you guys, I think everybody that knows me well enough to know that I was probably the harshest critic of you guys last year at the very beginning. Uh, they have over, y'all have overcome a lot. You've grown, you've learned, you've tried to get better. Um, Bob, I, I still think there may be st some things that um, that could still be improved, and I think that's something you are trying to do because I don't think you want to have a bull whip brought out to you. You know, you played right into my hand, uh, Tyler. I uh, I have to tell this story, and I I am not much of a storyteller, but I got to tell this one. I think Tim, you don't even know this, but Kevin, you're going to like this. So I think that we're making progress. My phone rang today, and I looked at it, and it said James Finch. <laughs> I thought I was going to get crucified for many things for the weekend. And I got to tell you guys, I got to tell this story. I feel very good to have his, his guidance, his respect. We had a great conversation. First thing he asked me was, did we learn anything this weekend? And then, we, you know, we talked about a lot of things. But I just got to tell you that it was it was. I feel very good about getting phone calls from people like that. I mean, I have a lot of, a lot, I'm fortunate to have a lot of good friends high up and uh, for him to call me today and talk about the weekend. And again, he was very positive. Um, we had a great conversation. So anyway, I just had to tell that quick story. I feel, I feel very blessed to be having him call me and talk about the weekend, talk about the future. And um, again, I think he's very supportive of what we're doing. So, yeah, I mean, we had a driver's meeting and, Again, as we grow, this is only t the 12th race we've had. That's We've made a lot of progress from the first one, and um, we continue to learn. And uh, from both the event that we're talking about, this is two years of having this event. You know, you look at big events, whether it be the Chili Bowl or Daytona 500 or Snow Snowball Derby, these are long-established 30-, 40-year events. So I'm trying to – contain our excitement and our and 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 criticism that we get knowing that we're still learning we're still growing and we really want as tim said to thank the fans thank the teams for for you know supporting us and uh, i think we're going to get there same with the series um we're fortunate to have a lot of smart owners and smart team drivers and things of that and they're giving us great ideas they we feel like we're all a big family and we're going to try to make this thing in its niche, which is what we call grassroots racing, and we're going to take advantage of the area we're at. We can have on-track autograph sessions. We can have team owner meetings that meet, are meaningful. We can have people call me on the phone. And, um, again, you know, the, the, the comment that Tim made was in jest because I'm telling you, he's helped. We've got several people that are on calls helping with this plan to go forward. And, uh, and, and again, I'm not the only one taking calls. Uh, they're all helping, and, and it's just going great. So anyway, thanks. Yeah, it. Um, you know, you. I think you guys have have uh, have increasingly gotten better, um, and and it's it's nothing's going to be perfect. But um, Tim, you've been around this sport for a long time. Bob, you've been around this sport for a long time. What What do you think <clears throat> is the most critical part to a race weekend besides Mother Nature? What 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 is that? What, what does that look like? 
Well, I'll go first. I mean, obviously, uh, uh, for us, um, it all starts with us, you know, getting our act together on putting on a good event that drivers want to come to and early entries. When we can establish uh, a very stout entry list in, in advance, uh, that gets fans excited, okay? So that's that kind of sets the tone for the weekend. And then, of course, you know, we try to go into each weekend with a, a well-orchestrated uh, plan and, and make sure that we are in position to execute it as good as we possibly can and let the racers know that, you know, that we're there, you know, for, for them and uh, we want to, uh, uh, again, execute that plan and, and, and run a schedule. Uh, and then And the fans will come. When we have strong fields of cars, we can get race fans. So uh, I think once the fans get in the stands, the drivers get excited. I mean, it all goes hand in hand. I mean, we need we need big crowds in the stands to excite the drivers and big fields of cars in the pits to excite the fans. And uh, if we do our job to orchestrate both of those, uh, both sides of that uh, fence, if you would, then, uh, uh, then the rest is just, you know, up to uh, – what happens when the green flag drops? And I'm certainly with the with the talent that we've got in short track racing today. I mean, there's no doubt in our mind that fans are going to see great race. So I'll, I'll second what Tim says. Maybe add a little bit to it because he's right. Our 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 first thing to make a great event is the teams, and we we just have to make them part of our you know partners with us to work with them on the procedures, how the race works, and everything. And then we move to the, the grandstands, which really dictates, um, you know, the dollars and the purses and the TV eyeballs and things like that. So when we can get fans in the stands, enjoying what they see in the product, two hours and five minutes, things like that. Um, maybe add a few more things. You know, we love the autograph session. We love the T-shirt guns, things like that. So it's a big thing. And then the third thing I will say is, where we're moving now is for sponsors. We're going to grow the sponsorships, which not only for the event, but also for the teams. Yeah. We would love for teams to get more sponsors on their cars. We would love for teams to be selling more t-shirts and hats. So that's, you know, not to give all our secrets away, but it's not a secret. Um, whether it's NASCAR or NFL or NBA or major league baseball, it's all goes in, in hand in hand. So I think my major thing was, is, you know, everyone seems to be working in the right direction. We all have a plan and we'll all do better as we grow. I'll tell you what it looks like to me, Mr. Bob and Tim, is, is both of you do a great job at splitting the racing versus the business side of the racing. And and there is two different sides, in my opinion. I, I don't think you can mix the two. You have to have them separated because this at the end of the day, this is a business, right? And the business has to prosper to continue down the road. And I think both of you do a great job at splitting that. Thank you. Um, well, I'm, go ahead. I'll, go say, ahead. I'll say this about that, Kevin, uh, just kind of in a nutshell, you're, you're exactly right. I mean, it all has to go hand in hand. I mean, uh, gosh, we'd love to double our purses and lower our, our pit prices and, 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 and make tires cheaper and, and all that stuff in a perfect world. But at the end of the day, it is a business. Everybody has to, to try to, uh, uh, you know, make the most educated decisions that they can. And, uh, uh, we want something that's sustainable. I mean, we want to make this bigger and better, uh, but we want it to be sustainable. We don't want to, we don't want it to be a bubble that's just going to grow and grow and then burst. And then where are we? So, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of looking towards the future. There's a long range plan to, to, to make racing better, but it has to be a work in progress. It can't happen overnight. Well, I think if you continue like you're doing here and get that exposure on TV, get those sponsorship and get the sponsors engaged to then get on a quarter panel of a car and get on to help these drivers that makes it easier on their pocket to be able to race and more drivers be able to come. So it, it, it y'all are doing a good job of creating that buzz, creating the, the feel for, for sponsors to be like, Oh, Hey, you know, Cole butcher could have four people call him this week because he won and he's a hot shoe right now. And, you know, nationally TV, national televised and all of those things. Uh, before you got on here, Tim, we were talking about, you know, how good track TV looked this weekend and 
the just the professionalism of it. I mean, it's really uh, if you would have from Saturday night to Sunday, that it was almost like didn't really you know you got two major functioning there, to but two separate networks. So I think that does go. You guys hit very well that it, it goes hand in hand, and I think the more you guys succeed. I think it helps the back pocket of the driver because they've got the chance to get a sponsor on board um, and that type of thing. So uh, Cole Butcher won this past weekend. Um, I, I'll just say this, and, and I, you know, uh, the Donnie Wilson cars were uh, even Colby Howard. He didn't really uh, run up front, but Donnie Wilson cars were really the the, the class the class of the of the field this weekend for sure. Well, you know, Donnie's operation is is top notch. There's no doubt about it. He's got some great people in his organization. He's got some great drivers. Uh, Anthony Campy is right there with him. Stephen yep. Nassie was knocking on the door uh, there at the end, and Casey Roderick had the the strongest car early in the race, and then ended up with some some issues, you know, mid race that kind of slowed him down. Uh, Bubba Pollard always would be would be a contender at the end, and un, very uncharacteristically of. Of, of any super late model racer nowadays. I mean, he exploded an engine. I mean, we were all just kind of shocked at, at, at what happened there. So took him out of contention, but the field is full of, of contenders. Uh, the, the, as they say, the cream will always rise to the top. And uh, uh, that isn't to say that there isn't going to be multiple winners this year in, in the ASA stars tour and ASA Southern super series and the CRA series and then the Midwest tour. There's some great racers across the board that are all capable of winning on any given night. Well, I think you're going to have multiple winners. I don't think it's going to be a dominating thing um, for one driver per se. Um, I will, Bob, I've said this to you time and time again, we, we talk often. I do wish that you guys for 2025 would take a look at maybe the value of the points uh, per se to, to not give Winning a race to me means should mean more than winning a stage, and um, and hopefully that's something that can be looked at next year. Well, as as we keep saying, you know, we're early in this, and we love all this uh, conversation. I think that sh shows Kevin how much interest and passion we have behind us. So I do think Tim and I are, and all the staff we have are are, are really listening close. Um, I want to add one thing, though, about what Tim was saying and, and you, Tyler, about the, the teams and the drivers that we had. You know, we can keep going down that field. I mean, the 26th, uh, uh, Dawson Sutton was leading the race and had no oil problem. Austin Nason was having a good day. I mean, we can go on down that list, and, and that's what excites me the most is how many teams we had running so good on Sunday. Well, that, that brings me to where I'm at with this, Mr. Bob and Tim, is is that what most people consider one of the heydays in short track racing are the late 80s into the 90s, where you had the Hooters Pro Cup guys, and you had this, and you had that. And that's what I'm seeing that y'all have brought back. Y'all, we've stood the test of time, and, and y'all are bringing that back. You look at that field. And you're, you've got legitimately this year, you've got 15 drivers that could win on any one of these races when they show up because the talent's there, the crew chiefs are there, the people working behind the scene on these race cars are smarter. They're there to win. Um, I just, that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing that y'all have brought back a resurgence of short track racing. And when y'all talk about the future, I think the future is wide open for, for this series to to just be as big as y'all want it to be, and it will withstand the, the, the time and and gain popularity as we go forward. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, there it's just it, – it truly is what the name of it is. It's the Stars Tour. It's the, the stars of, of short track racing. They're coming out, and uh, they're, they're getting that. But, you know, <clears throat> um, Tim, I'll, I'll ask Tim this question. It was kind of shocking this weekend that there was a there were a lot of if you notice I know you're busy during the race but did you notice kind of down turns turns three and four it's like that section of pit road was like jinxed like it was like <laughs> oh, almost with like ten to go there was no pit boxes there did it surprise you though that there was that many mechanical issues um, when typically we don't see that. 
Yeah, very much surprising, uh, Tyler. Uh, the attrition rate was higher than what it uh, what it normally is for a race, and I I don't know what to attribute that to, other than maybe it was just a. Uh, uh, you know, one of them days for for some of the race teams. Uh, uh, these the, the the cars are are built so well nowadays. The engines are solid. Uh, the teams are well prepared. You don't see much attrition. We don't see as many cautions as we used to see. Uh, but yesterday there was some uh, mechanical uh, failures, as I mentioned. You know, just Bubba Pollard's engine, and uh, uh, as 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 Bob mentioned, Austin Sutton had a great run going, and just out of the blue developed an oil leak you know you just don't see that kind of stuff so just one of them days i think it was uh, i don't think that's a an indicator of anything that's uh that's to come i don't think there's problems with the cars i just think it was again one of them days well it wasn't just one engine builder either i think uh, timothy watson had an issue with an oil oil pressure didn't come up he's got a pme motor bubba's got a peters i think um Dawson Sutton, I think they're Hamner maybe, but I, I don't want to be quoted of saying that. Austin Nason had an, an engine issue. Um, so uh, what one thing that I will say that I think really um, should go also to pat all the drivers on the back is you're not seeing a bunch of knuckleheads out there wrecking each other. They're, this is starting to become, hey – it's a, you're going to have one or two that you just can't keep straight, but um, it's, you've got one, you know, um, they're not, they're not out there wrecking each other, you know, and I think that also shows to some respect level, they're trying to show each other. Yeah. I mean, I think the group we're dealing with is, is the, is the elite group. I mean, you know, they are our professionals and they, uh, they're, they, they know how much these cars cost. They know what it costs to repair them. So certainly they're not out there just running into each other and, and not worrying about it. Uh, so I think that probably, you know, in reference to what I said earlier, kind of is, is indicative of why we see less cautions uh, than we used to. And the talent level is top notch. And uh, I mean, all that, uh, all that said is, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of reason we're seeing the kind of racing we are. And, the, you know, the times, if you looked at them uh, uh, through qualifying and, and even through lap times during the race, I mean, the field is so tight. I mean, it's uh, it's just amazing, and that's that's what's yielding the great racing that we're seeing. Yeah, seventh place car was running at one point, the fastest as the as was the fastest car on the on the track. Two more things, and I, I don't want to hold you guys up, and then me and Kevin are going to let you guys slide, and then we're going to cover a couple of more things. But one other thing I wanted to point out: what a great job Hoosier has done bringing a, a tire to the track. I mean, just an outstanding job by the Hoosier organization uh, bringing a, a first first notch class tire. Yeah, I, I agree totally. Uh, we can even watch uh, on the track how it's performing and and then the wear of it and, and things of that nature. So that's going to make our, our racing better, our, our pit stops, the controlled ones and the quickies and the, the way we change tires throughout the event all better. So. It, it, it's going to be better for the, the the teams and how they strategize, but definitely better for the fans and the overall product. Mr. Bob, I got one more question for you. How excited are you to get to the what would be the mid part of the year going into the, the summer months with the racing as good as it's already been in your first two events? I mean, these guys, they're going to start putting on some really good shows coming June, July. In those those months there yeah kevin i gotta tell you we didn't really do this on purpose but when we look at our schedule the different tracks that we go to i think are really going to play into this i yes. mean we go from you know the the new smyrna and, and pensacola then we're going to go to a smaller track at hickory and then we're going to go to a mile track in milwaukee and madison and then a quarter mile in in, in anderson so i think that's going to really play into this and when it's all said and done, that's going to be part of our our uh, our mystique about our series. You know, these guys are going to have to perform at different tracks, different banking, different surfaces. And uh, I think that's really going to show at the end of this. 
Well, Tim and uh, uh, Bob Sargent, Bob Sargent, uh, Track Enterprise President and ASA Promoter, and Tim Bryant, uh, Southern Super Series and Five Flag Speedway Promoter. Tim, you've got an action pack uh, April coming up. Uh, you've got uh, in two weeks. You've got the uh, Allen Turner Pro Late Models uh, coming to your track. If I think, if I'm talking right, and then you've got uh, the third and Super Series will go up for a Rumble on the River at Montgomery Motor Speedway, and then I'm not looking at the schedule, but maybe two weeks after that, you're going to pull a double header and bring back the old double header at Pensacola Mobile. We do. And, uh, you know, what, uh, as we have a little bit of a lapse here between our now and uh, our next ASA Stars event at Hickory, we certainly want to keep these guys racing. So uh, there's plenty of opportunities. There's some great pro late model racing coming up uh, at tracks uh, throughout the Southeast. And then, of course, you know, we're really excited to continue the Southern Super Series 2024 schedule. Uh, the Rumble by the River at uh, Montgomery Motor Speedway, actually going to be a double header with pro late model racing. Uh, and and our and our supers as well uh, on April thirteenth, and then we are excited about bringing back the, the you know, old school double header. Uh, April twenty sixth and twenty seventh will be hundred laps here at Pensacola on Friday night, and hundred laps at Mobile International Speedway on Saturday night. So, uh, uh, looking forward to a busy April, and uh, you know some great racing ahead. Well, guys, appreciate y'all joining us. Bob Sargent, thanks for. Uh, I'm glad to see you made it all the way back to Illinois, and Tim Bryant. Thank you. Tell Miss Pat, thanks for letting you hang out with us for a little while. We appreciate it. It's been fun. <laughs> Thank you, Tyler. Thanks. All right. Everybody, thanks, hang guys. appreciate it. Thank hang tight for a second. Uh, Kevin, don't go nowhere. Let me get plugged up here. Can you, can you hear me? I can't. I can hear you. Uh, can you hear me? I can't. Okay. I can hear you. That was good having those guys on. We appreciate them joining us. Oh, yeah. Uh, there yep. on the uh, Ty and Tom Uncut and Unfiltered Podcast, Sport Action Films. Tonight it's Ty and Kevin Peel. And Kevin, I'm just going to jump right on in to my next subject that i <laughs> Okay, let's go. Um, first of all, let me just see if I can get this pulled up here. I try to be fair to everybody. I think so. I think you are. Whether Whether I like you or not, I try to be fair to you. And uh, I sometimes let you know how I feel. But I also try to be fair and give you a chance to talk to your sponsors. Well, this past weekend, folks, I got told – I got to make sure I'm pulling up the right one here. Oh, yeah, here it is. Let's keep in mind that what you do and what y'all have been doing is, is not for um, the purpose of – your ego you're helping racing you're helping the racers let's keep that in mind before we move through this segment here yeah. this is all for the racers in the end correct that's right it's all for the racers and we're just trying so we're doing a pit walk and we're going through the pit walk and uh trying to show everybody um you know like we did it up as they come through tech we're interviewing them and um We'll just let y'all be the judge. Well, hold on a second. Maybe. Here we go. Center of the Go Fast Pull Award. Let's see what we get. Casey Roger, you got a second? Nope. He's declining live on Facebook. That's all right. We'll move on down the line. We're trying to at least be fair, but uh, we can. Uh, we'll talk about that on the podcast. I actually. I'm going to have fun with that little conversation on the podcast. So um, we tried to interview uh, Casey Roger. And uh, Mr. Roger, you declined the interview. So since I can't get one, I'll have one now. And you're more than welcome to join this show at any point. Uh, you actually have my cell phone. And uh, I'd like to have you on. But, Kevin, why would a driver, uh, like, I don't understand that. And I'm not my feelings either. I don't understand it, and I'll tell you why. Um, Casey is probably, or he is, he's not probably, Casey is one of the best wheelmen in short track racing. Um, 
in my opinion, he might be. I mean, a lot of people go through anxieties, right? But when you're in this business and you're in this business to move forward with your racing career, you know, if that's if that's his goal, I want to move forward in my racing career. You have to now take every opportunity that is placed in front of you with social media. You have to be a face on social media. So you, I'm not saying he had feelings or he doesn't have feelings, but when, when you're able and somebody's there wanting you and, and, and is practically giving you space on social media in a positive outlook, mm -hmm. um, you take it. You don't, you don't shy away from that. And um, I think that's something that, you know, down the road, he might regret, especially, I mean, if he's going to deny that, is he going to deny, um, you know, maybe a bigger type of audience uh, interview just because he doesn't want to talk? I mean, he, he's got to get that together. This, it's, this is part of the business now. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I mean, look at it. I mean, uh, Kyle Bush, when Kyle Bush got in trouble back four or five, six years ago, uh, he had to show up at Phoenix and he had to have a microphone. I first want to, for the whole, I want the whole, for the record to be set straight. I used to own a car. Casey gave me my first win as a driver, Absolutely. as an owner. At Selma. Good times. We, we wore their ass out. B but back to the Kyle Bush thing. When Kyle got in <laughs> trouble, Kyle stood there and answer the questions. I would have rather him say, sure, I'll be glad to give you an interview and give me the Kyle Bush and Kyle Bush, like Kyle Bush said, great to be back in my race car. Great to be back at the track. Looking forward to racing at Phoenix. Next question. Great to be back at the racetrack. Great to be back in my car. What What did we just talk about with, with Bob and Tim? All right. Yeah. We talked about separating business from the racing aspect, right? Well, as a driver, you really have to separate that as well. You have to separate, all right, I've got to get in the car. I've got to buckle the belts. Now it's time for me to, you know, do my job on the racetrack. But off the racetrack, it doesn't matter if you're a NASCAR driver or if you're a super late model driver. There's mm -hmm. two sides of this business. You have to take care of both sides and you've got to promote yourself. And if you don't promote yourself, this business will leave you. Let's just, let's just face it. All right. Since we're on the subject, is there any secret that Bubba Pollard is fixing to drive a junior motorsports car? And in the last year and a half, his social media platform, he got his crap together. He's his social media platform is like, you know, better than it's ever been. People are tuning in. He is making noise on social media. That catches the eye of sponsors. That catches the eye of, of, you know, car owners. That catches, all right, now they're starting to pay attention to you. Even we knew Bubba Pollard, but not everybody knew Bubba Pollard. Now Bubba Pollard's influence over social media is three times fold, mm -hmm. and, and look what it's done. I'm not saying that happens all the time. I'm just saying that it doesn't hurt, does it? No, it don't hurt. And I, let me just say this. I'm going to also show you something that was sent to me today. Okay. If I'm, if I'm a, this is a marketing deck they put out. Yep. Okay. You ready for this? Hey, this guy, two times Southern Series, three times World Crown, All-American, Snowflake. I mean, he hadn't won the Snowball Derby, but you ready for this? Hold on. Fifty thousand dollars to yes. sponsor this kid, twenty-five to forty-nine, and you can't give me an interview. He could have used that interview. <laughs> he could have used that interview. I'm afraid. I, I'm just. That I mean, was, that was the not right. That was not the right move. Just, just you don't have to like me, but if I'm going to be asking for somebody, hey, thousand to five thousand dollars as a supporter, and that gets you. That gets you just right here on the B pillar for a thousand bucks. Well, I mean, you know what I mean? So it's, it, it, it's, 
I'm not trying to be like critical or harsh on him, but I think you probably need to take the interview. You've got to take the interview because I'll tell you something. There's a kid that's on down that line that didn't make as much of a spark this past weekend as Casey did. <laughs> but I'll guarantee you he would have sat there and talked to you for 15 minutes. And that's Timothy Watson because he understands. 100%. Yeah. You know what I mean? 100%. He understands this is part of the business. And if I want to be where Casey is in three or four years, I take that interview. I do that interview. Um, it's just part of the business. I, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, there, I'm, I promise you there are people that don't like bad Bob, Pocket, pocket grass, pocket nos. Yes. Yes. I'm sure there's people that don't like Matt Weaver. I'm sure there's people that don't like uh, uh, Toby or a lot of them, but they take the questions. And the best part about it was I was going to ask him how do he feel like rolling off second. Absolutely. Got a, got, a, got a hot rod. You're coming off of a hot streak. <laughs> You're ranked the new short track power rankings that whoever put this out, short track power rankings, got you ranked second. I mean – I'm not here to tear you down. I'm here to talk about short track racing, help you get your deal out there. But it's for the racers. It, it's it's all for the racers and just just disappointing that it, it was dis, it was it was more disappointing. So then my counterpart Tom goes back and because I want the record and I, I want the record to 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 because I want to be uh, I guess you could say uh, fair and balanced, if you will, right? I, I, I want it to be. Um, uh, I want it to be fair here. Uh, uh, I want it to be. Fair. Hold on, just a second, because I don't want anybody to think that we're not being fair here. Um, Tom goes back. Gosh dang, you're always fast here. How are you so fast always? I, you know, just... Uh... And Tom gets the interview. So he didn't fully stiff us, but he, he, he stiffed us. Let's just say it. I mean, he stiffed you. <laughs> He didn't, yeah. he didn't. And again, him. I'm not in my feelings, people. Yeah. Just he being honest. you, you know, but, and that's what I'm saying in this business, you're not always going, you're not always going to agree every day. You know what I mean? You're, you're, you're not going to, going to agree on everything in racing. Guess who that is calling me? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I know it ain't Casey. I know it ain't Casey. Uh, they it probably doesn't even work in the woods out in Mississippi. I don't know, it might, but so um, we talked about. Uh, I, I want to get off of him. It, you know, Allie Ross says true, uh, transparent. Yeah, I mean, you know, just just being honest. You know, just um, uh, just just want to um, put it out there. Look, we're not here to. We're here to help. We're not here to hurt. We want to get the content. And no, I'm not going to do this if another driver declines to interview. This is, you know, I don't want to. Yeah, you might scare them off. You might always scare them <laughs> off. That's not the case. Uh, I think the message has been sent loud and clear to to know what what we're dealing with. But um, he has a lot of fans. I mean, he's a lack of. He's yeah, he's, really? he's he's he's. It's either one of the. You you're in a category of. I think you're in a. You've got four. You've got three major fan bases, and then you've got the rest. Okay. Okay. You've got a Bubba Pollard, a Stephen Nassie, a Casey Roger, the rest of the field. That's about what in the South. That super late model fan base. You're. I can't disagree with that. I mean, you you have blue collar which is Bubba's fans, you know. Mm -hmm. Then you have Steven's fans, which are more of the, um, I won't say higher echelon, but they're a different breed. They're not completely blue collar, I would say. And, and then you have Casey's fans that are just, you know, I, I would say Casey's fans are more of like um, 
traditional, just plain traditional racing fans. Mm -hmm. um, and then you do have everybody else which just loves racing and just, you know, you, and you always have that click that likes Rex, right? You know, that, <laughs> yeah. we, we go to the racetrack to watch the wrecks and they're all they're just bummed out when nobody wrecks you know yeah. but uh, yeah i mean the the fan bases are definitely separated if you don't believe it just go sit in the stands yeah i mean the stands the stands tell you everything everything that's going on i i um uh yeah, I mean, I, I would say this. You, you've you got uh, – that that's a good breakdown. Blue collar, your higher echelon type deal, and then Casey Roger. I, I'll say this about Casey. Out of everybody that's in short track racing right now, Casey Rogers had more opportunities to race on Sunday, but somehow has let his own self get in the way. I just think it's an anxiety thing. I always have. I know Casey a little bit, but somebody has to get in his ear. You're absolutely right. He has, he could be racing definitely on Saturday already. Um, probably with the opportunity to race on Sunday, but he's just that good. You know, let's yeah. just make it. If, if, uh, if Bubba Pollard or even, you know, I don't, you know, here's the funny part. I listened to Stephen Nassie talk on the on the show with Tim Bryant and them on the groove this past week. I I don't know that Stephen Nassie ever has wanted to go any higher than where he's at. I think Stephen's just happy being one of the best super late model drivers out there. Um never had that conversation. Next like, time I see like Stephen when Stephen I, was younger, right? And he was a little bit more, you know brash i guess would be a good term when he was a little bit more cocky right he was really really cocky when he was young um i think he i think he had i think he had thoughts of yeah i want to do that you know i want to go at that level i want to be a professional race car driver kind of you know it's just like you know a kid that's playing ball right at 13 14 years old if you're good at playing ball baseball everybody thinks about either going to a big college, a D1 college, or going to play in the major leagues. You do. You just do. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure he did, but as time wore on, as he got married, as he's got a family, um, I do think that a lot of guys fall into that category that they're just – it's a stable. They're used to it. Um, they're used to what they have to do, how they have to prepare – year in and yet year out and uh let's just face it being in nascar throws a monkey wrench in everything of your life everything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and i i think some of them as they grow up as they like i said as they get to being adults they don't want that they they just they're happy with doing and being on top of the mountain too that has a lot to do with it i mean you go and all right you're in the top five year in and year out and super late models then you go to the affinity series and you're running 20th 25th mm -hmm. it, does that sound fun you know and you've got all this social media you got to do you got all this sim time you got to do now they want you to work out you know what i mean you got to work out you've got to work out every day you've got to be at the office you got to have all these briefings sponsors are on your back because you're not running you know 15th you're running 24th mm -hmm. They don't want that. Talking about a, a guy that has had a, a lot of success. I saw this post earlier, and I'm going to get Brandon Lyons on here uh, on the podcast soon. Brandon Lyons, a NASCAR spotter for William Byron. You ready for these? For, you ready for these fun facts? Yeah. Yesterday's fun facts milestones. He posted tenth cup. He has won ten cup wins with William Byron. And 20 wins across all series is dating back to 2015, their very first win at Greenville k and East. In 2015, um, he had four wins. In 2022, 
He had one, two, three, four, five, six. He had six total wins. He had one, two, three super late models and three, uh, excuse me, two cup wins and then one more super late model. In 2023, he had one, two, three, four, five, six, six cup wins, two super late models, and this year already has two wins. Yeah. Um, and that's a guy that, hell, he bypassed everything because he grew up racing on I racing, yeah. you know? Um, but I saw that Brandon Lyon spotter for, I don't know what made me get off on that, but that was a pretty interesting little deal. But back to what we were talking about. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to move on from this topic. But in my opinion, the biggest waste of talent that could have made it big will be Casey Rogers. And is Casey Roger? So yeah, we'll move on. We'll move on from that. Uh, short track uh, super late model rankings came out today. Uh, don't know who it is. Don't care who's behind it. But at track short power R short track power rankings came out. Let's see if you agree with it, Kevin. Um, Bubba Pollard number one. It has Gio Ruggiero number two. He's up one spot. It said Cole Butcher coming off of a win. He's new to the top 10. He's third. Steven Nassi, fourth, up five spots. James Finch, Jake Finch, down one spot to fifth. Jet Nolan, down one spot to sixth. Casey Roderick, down five spots to seventh. Jacob Gomes, eight. He's new to the top 10. Michael Hine is new to the top 10 at nine. And Dawson Sutton remains at 10th. Um, I think you swapped Steven and – and Jake, I think okay. you swapped them. But um, and Jet Nolan, I he's been good this year, dude. They've got their stuff. I mean, Nick over there uh, works on his car. Uh, you don't. You got to know how to take Nick. Nick can either be a real nice guy or Nick can just be a Nick. Well, uh, had a good conversation with Nick this weekend. Really good guy, hard worker, does a really lot of things. But guess who's helping Nick with that? I'm not saying that. He's always behind it, but guess who's uh, helping that set up on that Fury car? Uh, who, there's no telling who would that be. That would be Derek Thorne. Oh, well, there you go. Derek you Thorne go. has uh, helped them a little bit. I don't know if he's still helping them, but I know at uh, the Big League last year he helped them. I know at New Smyrna um, and then one other race, I think Cordell maybe. Uh, there was a DTR a sticker on there, and, and someone had dropped a little bug in here that Derek Thorn had was helping him on that. And he knows Fury cars probably better than anybody. He knows Fury cars very well. Um, very very well. Um, I think ASA. I I'm I don't want I I'm gonna say this now to Bob and Bob. If you're watching, you and I've already talked about this. I think ASA needs to change three things. If they're they need to, uh, if there's a caution within ten laps of the damn stage break, throw the mop and let the stage break in. Yes, yeah. not five laps before race four more to have a major wreck. Just throw the call stage and be done. They have put so much emphasis on the stage that it's starting to get old. Number well, two, go ahead. Well, Go ahead. Well, stage racing in general, I'll just be honest with you. If you take a poll of racing fans, I would, especially at the grassroots level, I don't, I, I don't even think it's a 50-50 split. I think most people don't enjoy the stage racing. Um, but that's, you know, that's just what I hear in my opinion. Um, I think the stage, I think you're right. I think, you know, they took something that, that seems to be working a little bit, seems to be bringing it back a little bit of excitement in the NASCAR ranks and tried to bring it to short track racing. But, and, and look, every time you try something new, you know, you're always going to have people that say, Oh, that, you know, that's not very good. And, and this, but, um, and we'll see, we'll see this year as it moves forward. But I think for the grassroots group, grassroots racing, I think the stage racing um, is it's not everybody's cup of tea. Also, I think they need to do is if there is a if there is a caution, 
let them come in and take the tires. If they want to take four, let them take four. If they want to take two, let them take two. Do away with your competition cautions. Have your stage breaks. Hold on, hold on. I know where everybody's going with this. Oh, well, they'll be flying in $10,000 pit crews again. No, you just have a competition caution. You say, look, you got three. Every caution is a comp caution, basically. It's going to take you. They're so damn slow up there Sundays on the score, and it takes seven laps to get it straight. <laughs> just look. You got three laps. You got three laps. Come in. Get your shit straight. If you want to take tires, take them. Move on. Not – you got to take two here, two there, two there. Hey, look, had Bubba Pollard not blown his engine, do you know that they would have possibly um, – do you know that they would have possibly had all the teams with two tires left in the pits? See, that's – and and you know where I'm at with this. I, I don't like any type of rule that you start boxing in the team to where they can't strategize how they want to strategize. I'm with you on that. If if you have eight tires for a race, mm -hmm. don't tell those teams you got to come in and take two tires and fuel, and then you got to come back around and take two more tires. I Don't do that. Let them either step on their own big toe or at the end of the day, hold a big trophy and say, hey, I made the right call. That's part yeah. of racing. You and know, I'll tell you something else. Them. And I'll tell you something else. Taking shocks off and moving shocks around and all that during the race, that, they need to stop that, that too. They need to stop all that. That's I noticed that the other day at the uh, at the Rattler. You had teams coming in, jacking up the cars, you know. I, I mean, you're in the middle of the race, and look, all intents and purposes, whatever, whatever. You got drivers out of the car. You got drivers out of the car using the bathroom, drinking a Coca-Cola, <laughs> eating a hamburger. The teams are working on the race car like you're hot lapping. And then they get back in and, and go race some more. To yeah. me, that that you're taking away what racing is all about. I want to see the Iron Man. I want to see them out there running 250 laps, 200 laps, whatever it is. And I want to see who has the best car and who's prepared the best at the end of the day and made the, the right strategy calls. That's what yeah. you want to see as a race fan. Yeah, I, I, I'm uh, – Allie Ross says 100% agree on the timing of that stage-breaking uh, competition caution. Yeah, I just think that, you know, hey, give them 10 tires. It's a 10-tire race. It's 200, 250 laps, whatever the case may be. If it's more laps, then obviously more tires. Uh, we're going to do away with the comp cautions. Stage breaks are going to be this. If there's a caution in between, it's not a quickie unless – unless my suggestion would be this. Uh, if there's a caution at lap 70 – let's just call 71, okay? That's a comp caution. I don't care if it's a one car spin out that spun around. You come around. When you come back around, the pits are open. It's three laps. It's going to be a total of five laps on that caution deal. When right. you come out, if you didn't if you didn't come in, then you line up behind all those cars. Typically, how they're doing it now, they're going to have two laps to get back in order. Because while they're in the pits, scoring and timing should have enough time to to give a rundown when they come out. They're yeah. going to do do away with the choose cone. <laughs> okay. Okay, do away with the choose cone, line up race. If there's a caution within 15 laps of that caution, that caution would then be deemed a quickie. Can, I, can, I, touch, can I touch on one thing there? Why Why are we still on a choose cone? Uh, I don't know, but I'll tell you we're making progress. You know, let me tell you where we're making progress at. At least well, we're not invert, at least we're not drawing a pill to invert the field. Well, this is true, but um, so I, just, I think if we give them one more year, they'll do away with the choose cone. I just think the choose cone is worthless. It is. It, it, yeah, I mean, it's just it's dumb. And look, I've benefited from it as a modified driver. I've benefited from it. They ran us on a choose cone last year, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody flocks to the bottom. I'm back there running twelfth, and next thing you know, I'm running top four because don't nobody want to go to the top. 
you know, so I've benefited from it, but it's worthless. It just causes confusion. Then you've got Confu guys. confusion in time. And time well, is, is what they're trying to, you know, Bob says, well, I want to be up under two hours and five minutes. Well, you could be up under a whole less than that if y'all quit worrying about the five cards in the back that ain't going to move up in the top 15. Y'all trying to get them straightened out. You know what the choose cone does? Choose cone creates cautions because then you've got guys that do jump up on the top that their car is not capable of running in the top five. They've gained four or five positions. They're up there running with guys that run up front all year long or all day long, and they their car – just can't do it. And then next thing you know, now we've got a big pile up in turn three because he spun out on the top, trying to get him a little bit more than what his talent would allow him at that present amount of time in the race. So now what have you done? You talk about time in the race. Now you've extended that race. Now you're not under two hours and whatever anymore because you've had five cautions because of the choose call. Yeah. And so if they have, a caution within 15 laps of that one caution is then deemed a, a quickie, right? So that you yeah. can't come in and get tires and then have your stage break. Um, and then, you know, if they're, if, if, so I just think that that's, and let the guys take, if they want to take four, let them take four. If they want to take two, let them take two. If they want to swap lefts, let them swap lefts. Look, it, if you buy 10 tires for a race, I don't care. I shouldn't care as a race promoter. I shouldn't care if you burn all 10 of those tires up in the 50, first 50 laps. It shouldn't yeah. matter to me. That's right. You know what I mean? It shouldn't matter. Yeah. So I'm with you on that. So I think that's, I think that's an improvement they need to make. I also think that, and the, let me tell you something, not being critical of them, these are just food for thought ideas. I think this is stuff that they, they could, digest and maybe make part of their program and um and go from there i'm just one person i don't know it all but i think these are things that they should talk about um and and then and then i think you know doing away with with some less less rules but i've been saying that i sound like somebody else talking but on that deal <laughs> he preaches that all the time he probably talks about him too much and i listen to it and then i i drink the kool-aid but um kevin appreciate you joining the show it's uh it's always a privilege you're more than welcome to come on here uh, i know your plate's full but um i always value your opinion on racing for sure well i always like to talk about racing you know racing is is a uh, is a part of who i am um and it's always nice to to come in and and touch on things that i think that need to be talked about you know, and, and again, you say it time and time again. I mean, when we talk about stuff, we're not being critical. We're just, we have an opinion. We're opening up that opinion for conversation. And sometimes those conversations, you know, lead down other paths that need to be talked about in racing. And, and that's what makes the sport grow and makes the sport stronger. Um, and like I said before, if, if you're if you haven't got a social social media outlet mm -hmm. as a racer right now, if you're if you're not on that on that that ticket, you you need to start thinking about it if you're wanting to be uh, if you're wanting this to move forward for your future because this is what you got to do. This is good for the sport. This is good for every racer that you touch that you stick a microphone in front of. Um, and the conversations always, you know, make you smile at the end of the night. So, on that, uh, very, very, very true and important. And um, on that note, I want to first put a disclaimer that this show is not um, biased or unbiased to anybody. We welcome anybody that wants to come on the show or we try to help. But the next statement, I want to make sure that everybody knows that. This is not a Bubba Pollard fan page, but I think everybody in short track racing this weekend, even though you don't like him and even though he, you don't like his success as a person, I think that you have to somewhere deep down inside of you has to become somewhat of a Bubba Pollard fan for short track grassroots racing because He's getting the opportunity to go and race in, in an iconic 
as I say that, I look over your shoulder and I see a Dale Earnhardt pitcher, right? He's going to race in a Dale Earnhardt Jr. motorsports um, car. He's going to be representing every short track racer that's ever wanted the chance to go race in Xfinity or NASCAR. And um, I think whether you like him or not, you have to somehow dig deep inside of you to say, I hope he does well. Is there not a better match than Dale Earnhardt Sr. and Bubba Pollard? No, that's a pretty good, uh, two um, pretty good ones there. Yeah. A lot of like, a lot of like. Um, and I think that, uh, you're right. I think that his fan base is going to grow by leaps and bounds. People are going to, you know, want to know more. The people that don't know about Bubba is going to want to know more about Bubba. And um, it just feeds in, like I said, to that Dale Sr. Um, type of person, personality that Dale Sr. was. Whether you knew Dale Sr. on a personal level outside the business of racing or whether you just know Dale Sr. as in, you know, the intimidator, the race car driver, um, they their their personalities, the way they carry themselves, their fan bases, their fan bases are the same. And yeah. uh, you know, I think well, you're right. I, yeah, and I think I think probably what, what pushes that is is um on a Monday, on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Bubba Pollard is just like any other of us. Absolutely. He's pumping shit, digging, <laughs> dig, you know, working. I mean, that's a fact. He's working. He's working. digging for a septic tank. He's providing for his family. And, um, and I think that's, he can relate to the fan base. He can relate to the people. Um, who who's um Roth? What's his name? The track announcer. Oh, I. I, I at, at Five Flag Speedway does race. I, I, yeah, I know who you're yeah. talking about. I just I don't. I know. heard him say something over the weekend. He said, "You go to a NASCAR race, the longest line is Chase Elliott. You go to a super late model race, the longest line is Bubba Pollard. Is Bubba Pollard." And so uh, we at Sport Action Films, Ty and Tom, Uncut and Unfiltered, not only is he our friend, but um, uh, someone that uh, you have to like and appreciate. We wish him well this weekend as he gets into a junior motorsports car. This past weekend, he raced an ARCA car. And he had his crew chief down. And they worked together. First time they've ever worked together. Probably one of the best things they could have done was to work together this past weekend. They they now know that talk, right? The crew chief yeah. was like, ah, I, might, I might have freed you up a little bit based off what you told me, right? Now they know how that communication needs to be for this weekend. And um, uh, I think that's pretty cool that they, Look, they were able to work together. This is not – this is a great opportunity, but don't as, – as good as Bubba is now – you know, the, and Bubba's sitting there and he's thought about this ever since <laughs> it's come about. He has an expectation of how well he wants to run, but he also has realities of the differences in what he's about to do. There's, mm -hmm. there's, there is a lot of differences. Crew chief, as you just mentioned, getting on the same page, getting on the same um, vocabulary with your crew chief. The crew mm -hmm. chief understanding the feel. Every race car driver has a little di bit different feel, but you got to understand in those cars that he's fixing to drive, the tire is one of the biggest differences. Now, I will stand behind what I said. Bubba is probably the best at adapting to a tire he's never been on before. Mm -hmm. But he has expectations in his head. I'm sure talks have been all right. Look, this is what we expect. And and I think, you know, reality will set in. I think Bubba will run well. Um, I wish him to run well. Hey, I hope he goes up there and wins the dang thing. If he does, I mean, that gum. I mean, everybody this side of the Mason-Dixon line is going to have a party for him. But um, 
you know, obviously this is a big, big step for him as 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 far as in the cars and the differences in the cars and the differences in the field. But somebody asked me this the other day. I will say this, and I, I haven't talked to Bubba about it. I don't know how Bubba is prepared for the race, but somebody asked me, you know, how do you think Bubba's going to do? And I'm like, you know, I would love Bubba to win. If I'm if I'm in the business side of the fence, looking at this coming up weekend, I would say 18th or better is absolutely the bomb.com. Um, oh, he'll finish better than that. But we're not talking about. 10 years ago we're talking about you know has the opportunity to to have probably thousands of laps underneath his belt before he even gets to the racetrack um not to mention the practices and this and that and the other that he'll be able to do and has already done um with sim rigs like they are now the did you hear what happened to did you hear what happened to him at, but did you hear what happened to him at the sim deal no i didn't he only lasted like three minutes and got motion sickness had to get out Oh, really? Yeah. Really? He's supposed to go back Wednesday. But, yeah, he got motion sickness, had to get out. I can see that. I, I tried some of that. Uh, and, and they told him, hey, don't feel bad. Guys like Mark Martin, all of those guys can't get in it. But these younger generation and younger kids can um, because uh, they're used to, I guess you could you would say, the video, video games yeah. or whatever. Their brain, um, their, their brain yeah. is – has been uh, managed differently throughout their young childhood. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. But I I, I do. I, I think uh, Bubba will do fine. I mean, he, it ain't going to be uh, – ain't going to be nothing to him. It's just going to be another race. He'll be fine. He'll run well. He'll do what he's, he's supposed to do. And um, I do think that if he finishes really well, it, it's going to open up even more doors. And even more races, um, and that's what I'm excited about for him. Well, I think what's also interesting to know is 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 what Dale Earnhardt Jr. has done is this has cost Bubba Pollard that like yeah. Junior Junior and Reem Reem came on big sponsor his sponsor of the deal, uh, and given this to these to these grassroots guys. And I think this is something that, you know, um, and the, no telling what the future and who the next grassroots racer would be and those type of things. But um, I, I think you said it best, and, and we'll close on this note. If he wins, and and he can do it because this is his type of track. Yeah. Um, yeah flat. Let, let's, you touched on that before we close out. Um, that's one thing that's in his – in his wheelhouse this is a this is a racetrack that's flat that's got a lot of turn speed in it that you can be very aggressive up off the corner um and it has two or three different lines as the race moves forward Mm -hmm. um i I do think that the race the one thing i will say it depends on the tire they bring i i haven't looked at it i don't know what tire they're bringing um it it depends on the tire that they bring um if the tire has fall off, you better watch it. You better watch out for Bubba. If it has fall off, that plays into his wheelhouse as well. Yeah, because he can manage those tires better than anybody. Uh, yep. As we're closing here, uh, Caitlin Clark, uh, Iowa Hawkeyes are up 58-52 against West Virginia, and uh, Caitlin Clark has uh, 28 points on the night. 28 points about that. One of the best to ever do it. Time, time, uncut and unfiltered. Kevin Peel, thanks for joining us tonight. It's been fun. Uh, we appreciate you joining us. Always a pleasure uh, here in the Phoenix Water Solution Studio. You're over there, probably at the J and M Testing Lab. We yeah. are. Yeah, we'll, we'll uh, <laughs> and uh, we appreciate you joining us. Have a good rest of your week, and uh, we'll 